Welcome to Kickstart Your Career, your free course to set you on your way to find your dream job. In this episode, I explain the importance of assessing what really makes you tick and what you have to offer when exploring what your dream job might be. As we're going through this transition, obviously we need to regain or build back up some of our confidence and stress obviously plays a role in keeping that down. So we need to manage that as well. But at some point, everybody's going to hit a point where they now have to begin to assess what makes them tick as they start to look about, okay, what am I going to do now? What am I going to do next? How do you suggest people begin to assess what their dream job might be? Ah, that's such a good question, because this is where I tend to spend a lot of time when I'm coaching individuals. So first of all, they've got to assess exactly where are they in their lives at this point in time. And taking something like what I call a life inventory is a wonderful thing, because a life inventory will assess where you are right now in your career. What have you done? What's your physical environment and how conducive is it to working effectively? Where are you when it comes to your finances? Uh, Where are you in your relationships? Do you have positive working relationships as well? And so once you've assessed all of that, you'll be able to take, take stock of where you are in your life at this point in time. And you'll start to think what might be possible and might not. When it comes to a career, I encourage people to do make a values based exploration. Because if you follow your true personal and career values, you'll be able to always be on the right path. It's almost like a compass. If you follow your values, it'll take you there. Whereas if you think, you know, with your head and your heart, you'll probably never make a decision. You go in with your gut and your intuition and what your true values are, that will propel you forward. You need to also assess what are your motivators? What are your demotivators? And they can be a whole variety of things. Perhaps it's uh, what motivates you is being in a really uh, positive team environment, or maybe what motivates you is a very short commute to work. So that's important. So you've got to think of your motivators and demotivators. You need to assess also, where do your skills lie? What are your qualifications? What knowledge do you have? And what are your personal traits? Because that's what employers are going to be looking for. They're going to hire you because you solve a problem. So do you have the skills and knowledge to actually tackle that problem as well? And once you've done that, you can actually identify what's transferable and what's not if you're thinking of making a big change. Then you need to assess what might be your dream role. Really have a bit of fun with this and think, if I could have any role in the world, what would be the specific traits of that role that would motivate me? So it could be the location, the job function, the size of company, the industry, etc. And then the final thing that's really important is to sit down and spend the most amount of time thinking, what have I achieved in my career so far? Can you give an example of how you turn an achievement into a result? Well, first of all, you've got to think, what have I done that maybe has saved an organization money? or has streamlined a process. And very often when I'm working with my clients, they go, oh, Jane, I don't know. I just did my job. And that's what a lot of people do. They, they, they take their responsibility seriously. They do a good job and they think, okay, well, it was part of my job. So what was the big deal about it? But when you think about it, everybody does something that is of benefit daily. And so what we need to think about is, first of all, what problems or situations did you encounter at work that required a specific action? So document the problem, document what the obstacles were that that you were experiencing and the challenges of that problem. Then document what actions did you take to resolve that issue? And if you take the action and the result of your analyses and turn it into a single sentence or maybe just two brief sentences, you can actually lift that and put that into your resume, which will be an excellent accomplishment statement. Before the next episode, check out janejacksoncareers.com for more advice and guidance on everything to do with job search and career management and career development for success. Or you can ask me a question on Twitter, Facebook or Instagram. My handle is at janecareercoach. It's time to kickstart your career.